Hello, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to your uh, sessions in the valuation of a company. Specifically over the last couple of sessions, you discovered how to, how to value one cash flow using the whole time value of money concept. You also discovered how to value a stream of cash flows using the net present value um, uh, formula and um, concept. In this session, we are going to focus on how do we bring all that together along with the VAC and the capital asset pricing model and how do we value a company. And now, since, since at a very basic level, right, we know that a company produces cash. Right now, there are many reasons a company might exist for different people. For the founders, it might be passion for the product and building a huge company. For the employees, it might be again, you know, do working for a company that's very passionate and building the next big global product. But at a very fundamental level, for the shareholders in the company, they don't care about you know the passion or and all of. That. At some level, they do, but it's only meaningful if all that is manifested in how much cash the company can provide produce right so it seems quite intuitive that if the fundamental purpose of a company existing is to make cash for its shareholders it's at a very intuitive level it should you should know that uh, it, it sounds fair that you can value the company based on how much cash a company is producing right and which is the focus of this company how do you value a focus of the session which is how do you value a company using DCF discounted cash flow analysis uh, by discounting the cash flow that the company is doing to its shareholders now at a very basic level how are we gonna start this whole uh, calculation is we're gonna start with the operating income of the company it's otherwise called the EBIT um, EBIT is nothing but earnings before interest and tax that's that is what uh, essentially EBIT stands for earnings before interest and tax okay we're gonna start with the operating income of a company Let, let's just assume it is your you know we'll go back to our pizza example let's assume it's your chain of pizza stores that you have been starting up on the side apart from your work uh, we are going to value that pizza company right so let's say in year one your operating income which is revenue minus operating expenses is equal to operating income that is not the net income it's the operating income you let's say your operating income is in year one is one lakh let's say in year two your operating income is one and a half lakhs actually you know what let's get a more aggressive not one lakh 10 lakhs right 10 lakhs 15 lakhs and in year three your operating income is 25 lakhs. Now, this operating income is even otherwise called an operating cash flow. Uh, that's another word for it. There's many ways people describe it. Now, from your operating income, we are going to subtract the. Oh, sorry about that. We are going to um, subtract the taxes. And the reason we are subtracting the taxes is because tax is cash leaving the company. The goal here is we finally want to get to that cash number that is available uh, you know after all cash expenses which is why we're doing this so let's say that year you had to pay uh, roughly two lakhs in taxes okay and then let's say here you have to pay two and a half lakhs in taxes here you have to pay three and a half lakhs in taxes right so once you get that done we're going to subtract the taxes you are paying from your net from your operating income sorry yeah from your operating income you're going to subtract the taxes and that's how much money you have left with you now this is otherwise called the unlevered net income and the reason it's called the unlevered net income is typically the word leverage relates means something to do with the debt or the loans you take unlevered basically means that this net income still has your interest expense in it you see this number is ebit which is earnings before interest and tax so in the from this 10 lakhs you'll pay out your taxes and your interest but for the sake of this calculation we are not subtracting the interest we are only subtracting the tax you have to pay the interest is still here so we call this unlevered net income all right now is that the final cash on which we can value no right we already know there are some cash transactions 
that you will not see on the income statement which are only in the balance sheet so what are some of those uh, cash transactions um, the first one is probably uh, no no I think before that what we should do is we should depreciation and you, you remember this thing depreciation amortization these are what we know as non-cash expenses which essentially in this operating income somewhere about the operating expenses the company has added depreciation and amortization as an expense but we since we only know DNA is not a cash expense in that year we have got to add back DNA and let's assume let's say in, in the year one your DNA was one lakh in this year two and let's just say your DNA is one lakh it's uniform straight line uh, depreciation so it's uniform over the period of three years um, so again you have to add depreciation back to your un, uh, your unlevered net income because it's a non-cash expense which has been treated as a cash expense that you add back what other cash expenses would you have as a company your capex yeah you remember this one right your capex is um, another expense which is a cash expense it's the cash expense so you look at your balance sheet you find out what your capital expenditure is in this year and let's let's say it's been um, I don't know one and a half lakhs of capex uh, one lakh of capex and let's say another one and a half lakhs of capex now since capex is a cash expense that has not been compensated for in the operating income because capex is a balance sheet item you subtract capex from this operating income okay are we done yet almost but not really Ch change in working capital you know you remember this one where in the balance sheet we saw working capital is current assets minus current liabilities essentially working capital is the amount of money you need to run your um, business on a day-to-day -day basis your your op, your income statement does not factor in your change in working capital or your working capital expenses it's only operating expenses so you have to go to your balance sheet you have to take two balance sheet you have to take the balance sheet at the beginning of this period you have to take the balance sheet at the end of this period and you see what happened to my working capital if your working capital actually went up then what you've got to do is you've got to subtract i'm going to say your working capital went up by 50,000 in each of these years because working capital is cash outflow really um, we are subtracting it so keep it in mind every cash inflow you add it uh, or a non-cash expense you add it any cash outflow you subtract it then there's a there's a couple of other things you know that we could do to complicate this for example change in non-current assets and things like that but you know we will focus on understanding the concept of the DCS rather than doing this 100% right so change in working capital and uh, that's 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 pretty much it I mean that should give us a, that, that gives you a very good sense that we are getting to what is called a free cash flow number okay free cash flow or FCF which is nothing but your unlevered net income and I'm just saying plus the sum of the others but it's nothing but your unlevered net income plus your depreciation amortization minus your capex minus your change in working capital which is your free cash flow in these years seven lakhs oops what do I have here we have a slight oh sorry this is I know this is one lakh fifty thousand is actually 15 lakhs so you see the mistake you could make in Excel so you know hopefully you'll be in practicing Excel and making these mistakes so seven lakhs of free cash flow here 12 lakhs of free cash flow and 20 20 lakhs of free cash flow you see how even though your operating income is that number even though your unlevered net income is your number the actual cash that is left over after all the cash expenses is actually that number that is the real uh, you know insight into a company that is the number that investors are focused on um, especially you know debt and you know private equity kind of investors because it is from that money that you can pay them off and you know grow the company or you know whatever else you want to you, you want to do with it so that is a free cash flow of a company so now we know that to do our uh, discounted cash flow analysis the net present value we need a couple of other factors as well right we need to know what is this company's discount rate let's just make sure we are you can see all this here okay discount 
great. We saw that discount rate, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, either, um, you know, maybe the management said, uh, we want to value this company, um, you know, our cost of capital is 12%, so that's what, what that's what we're going to use as discount rate. Or investors say, this is how much return I need on this company, so this is how much the discount rate is. Or, you know, you, you got this discount rate using the weighted average cost of capital and the cap and model of the company. So, if that's your discount rate, right, then the NPV, uh, well, actually, uh, oh, before, before we do that, one other thing we need to do is that, see, all we did here is the value of, the, we wrote down the cash flows for the three years. But now what happens after the three years? The company doesn't end in three years, right? the company keeps going on. So you just can't value just these three years cash flow and say that you value the company. You also have to somehow factor in what happens after that. So a very um, you know commonly used simple way to do that is you calculate what is called a terminal value, which is you assume that at the end of three years this company is going to be sold. Okay, this company is going to be sold. You make that assumption and you say if it's going to be sold at that year three, what would somebody pay for this company at year three? And you put down a value there. And how do you get to that value? You use to get to that value. The first thing you need to calculate is uh, a EBITDA number. All right, EBITDA is nothing but earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Essentially, you take your EBIT number, which is your operating income, and you're, to that you add back your depreciation number. Right, and the reason you're doing that is because DNA is a non-cash expense. You're adding it back so that your EBITDA kind of you know is more representation of your cash expenses in your uh, income statement. So you get your EBITDA. And EBITDA is also among the most popular valuation metrics used to value a company. Okay, you you calculate the EBITDA of your company by adding back depreciation amortization to your operating income, and then you have to come up with something called a terminal value. Now, what is a terminal value? Is because you are trying to understand. You want to calculate a terminal value because you want to value what's happening to this company after year three, and you're assuming that this company is going to be sold in year three. So you have to come to an opinion on how much is the company going to be sold to. A very simple way is to you look around and you say, okay, I'm running a pizza company. Uh, other pizza companies in my whole uh, uh, in in my area, in my city, in in, in South India or North India. How much have they been sold for? So typically, people express a company's sale and they'll say, this company has been sold 10x EBITDA. 10x EBITDA, okay? B basically saying 10 times this company's EBITDA, this company was sold for. You say, okay, that sounds reasonable. So my company is also going to be sold for 10 times the EBITDA right here, which means that at the end of year three, you're actually going to get back 2.6 crores in cash when you sell the company. Okay, now you need to calculate the total cash flows. Now, what is the total cash flow? Is the free cash flow plus any terminal value cash flow you're getting? Are you selling the company near one? No. So you get this across. So in the first year, your cash flow is 7 lakhs. In the second year, it is 12 lakhs. In the third year, it's 2.8 crores, and that is because you are you know of this terminal value of 2.6 lakhs and because you're selling the thing actually to be a little more right you know it's it's highly unlikely that a pizza company is going to be sold for uh, 10 times revenue I don't know maybe it is actually so let's let's leave it at that maybe you're a fast aggressively going pizza company you will be sold for 10 times revenue okay that's your total cash flows what is the next step it is the NPV we need to calculate the net present value of the cash flows in the last session, I actually showed you how to calculate NPV by using the formula for each cash flow. That is just for you to understand it. But do it to do it fast, Bill Gates and Excel have made your life easy and they have a formula called NPV. So you type in is equal to NPV, you open your bracket, and then you click on your discount rate, which is 12%, you add comma, and then you select your cash flows. And then you close your brackets and right there. Two, 2 crores, 15 lakhs, 47,069. That is the net present value of all your cash flows in the future. Are we done? 
not fully done. Now, this is otherwise called the net present value. It is, an, it is the net present value. Also, call the enterprise value of the company, right? This is, this is the first time you hear, you're referring to this word enterprise value. Now, what is enterprise value? It really depends. For a very fundamental company like, um, let's say, your company, where let's say you don't have any debt in the company, the enterprise value, I'm going to write this formula right here, the enterprise value is nothing but uh, the equity value of the company um, is essentially the equity value of your company plus what is called net debt. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this across so this whole thing is clear for you. All right, that is the formula for enterprise value. Equity value is the value of your shares. Net debt is nothing but net debt is nothing but the debt you have minus your cash. Your debt netted to the cash is called a net debt. You add that to your equity value, and then you have what is called the enterprise value. So whatever number you're getting using the NPV is actually called the enterprise value. But the reason you're doing this whole discounted cash flow analysis is actually to get to the value of a company, which is actually the value of the shares of the company. So what you need to do is you actually need to get to an equity value. So from the enterprise value to get to the equity value, you subtract your net debt. And, sorry, you actually subtract your net debt. And that's just a derivative of this formula right here. And let's say you're, 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 you don't have you know, um, that much debt on your account. So let's just say your, your debt is 10 lakhs. 10 lakhs is, 10, 10 lakhs is your uh, net debt number. So your equity value is your enterprise value minus your debt, net debt. Your equity value is 2 crores 5 lakhs 47,069. That is the equity value of a company and that is the whole purpose of doing a discounted cash flow analysis or DCF to get to the equity value of a company. I'm going to highlight this so you know this is why we did all this. Now we can take this one step ahead and, and you can basically say okay if that, if that is um, the, the net debt of a company Oh, sorry, that is the equity value of a company. What is the price per share? What is the value of one share in the company? Then you base so to get to get that you put down the number of outstanding shares in the company, right? Uh, we're just gonna make sure all this is clear for you, while at the same time it's not kind of leaving the whole um, thing. Okay, just give me one second while I make this clear for you. All right, there we go. Okay, so l l let's say this company has uh, maybe one lakh shares outstanding. Yes, this company has, let's say, one lakh shares outstanding. That means, you know, the, it, either it's a private company or a public company, you can do a DC for, e, DCF for either one of those. Um, the, it has one lakh shares out there. So your price per share is equal to the equity value of a company divided by the number of shares outstanding. There you go. 205 rupees is the value of your share and that, that's how much one, one share costs in your company and the equity value of your company is 2 crores and 5 lakhs and there you have it. That is the DCF. That is how you calculate the DCF of a company in order to value a company using a discount rate and a terminal multiple uh, and an enterprise value and a net debt. Now you are very much on your way, you're heading into uh, you know how to calculate the valuation of a company. In the next session we are going to focus on another way to calculate the value of a company called comparable trading analysis. I will see you soon at that next session. Thank you. Bye-bye.